sorry. Good morning from Texas site conference today. And this is EDIT 624. We started the recording. All right, today we have um, a quick session because I'm gonna attend a, a keynote in half an hour. But I wanted to share with you amazing resources that I got together, especially in this conference as well. So I'm gonna add more and more into our uh, current um, list of things, but don't get overwhelmed because the most important thing is we're gonna talk about um, Carol Dweck and growth mindset, okay? The rest of the stuff um, um, we will uh, talk in uh, detail as um, uh, throughout the throughout the week. All right. So the first thing first. Happy International Women's Day. Today is March eight, and March eight around the world. I hope you celebrate in Abu Dhabi as well. It's the yes. um, Women's Day. So I wanted to. Yes. We're all going for a coffee in the evening after my class to celebrate womanhood. Beautiful. So when I come back, uh, we will have a reception. So we'll continue to celebrate because it's not just March 8th, right? It's celebrated every day. We need to celebrate women, children, men, all the human beings continue to celebrate being above ground. Years ago, somebody taught me that the most important thing for us to try, stay healthy and stay above ground. So as long as you're above ground, there is a solution for everything. All right, so let's start talking. What is growth mindset? Have you heard this term before? Um, yes, it's the opposite of being fixed mindset. It's being uh, open-minded and um, thinking out of the box. Perfect. This now, in the context of math education, is extremely critical. That's why I want to go us to this um, link that I have a lot of videos for you for related to um, math education, but the one we're going to watch is towards the, the end. And I want you to watch this um, for a few minutes. I don't know if it's going to play better on your end. Maybe you link it and watch it. You mute yourself and watch it. And I will try to watch it from this end. So, um, and I will talk after. There's no voice. Did you say something, Amna? Yeah, there's no voice because you, you're wearing headphones. <gasps> Sorry. Okay. What we should do, okay, I take, thank you. I should take it up. However, I think you should play it from your own end because it's not <laughs> going to be, because the, the background noise here is com, uh, conference voice. So... The link is, again, um, the Watch Me link that I put on the agenda on Blackboard. I'm going to go back. Watch Me link. And then if you scroll down, this is the um, video on Carol Dweck FX. Or, or I have another idea. Why don't I just send this to the chat? So you watch it on your own computer. And then we will come back in three minutes to discuss. Thank you. Children are praised for either their intelligence Wow, you did really well. You must be really smart at this. Or the effort they made. Wow, you did really well. You must have tried really hard at this. Then we give them a much harder set of problems. Ones that they might, in fact, struggle with. Here's the next one. 
and we see what happens to their confidence. Do they think, oh, this means I'm not good at it after all? Do they stop liking the puzzle? Or do they maintain their confidence and think, well, it just needs more effort or strategy? What happens to their motivation? Are you ready to go on? Ta-da! We also ask them, well, what, which problems do you want to work on some more? Those easier ones or those harder ones? And generally, we find that, that kids who have been praised for their intelligence really want to go back to those easier ones that were the, kind of their claim to fame. This is a sign of a fixed mindset, the belief that intelligence is innate and can't be changed. What we found was that children thought that that difficulty meant they weren't smart or they weren't good at the task. So you seem to have more trouble with this one, and I want to know why you think that was. Probably because I'm not good at these problems. A very discouraging conclusion. Other children show a growth mindset. The growth mindset is like this. No matter who you are, you can always become a great deal smarter. They feel smart when they're working really hard on something difficult and making progress. So if I give you some more problems, would you like more problems like these that are pretty easy so you'll do well, or problems like these that'll be hard but you might learn a lot from them? These. More like these? Students praised for effort generally want those hard ones that they can learn from. What I've learned from my research is that kids, and I think adults too, are exquisitely sensitive to what's going on in a situation, what other people value, what they're being judged on. What is that voice in our head saying? Is it saying fixed mindset things like, oh, you better not make a mistake, you better look smart, people are judging you? Or is it saying growth mindset thing? Here's an opportunity, here's a mistake I can learn from. I feel smart when I do something difficult. All right, I hope you had a chance to watch the whole video. And in the meantime, good morning, Basma. All right. Good morning, Dr. Melda. Sorry I came in late. I had trouble with the, with the baby. No problem. We are recording the session so you can go back and, and watch it if you miss anything. Thank you so much. I just watched a video by um, Carol Dweck. She um, has done this 20 years of research on growth mindset. And I really enjoy um, um, learning from her uh, research because it is extremely critical for the success, for the future of everything. So I'm going to ask you uh, to watch these three videos one after another. I listed them here. And then uh, we'll continue to discuss. But first of all, have you had any problem with growth mindset yourself when you were growing up? So I want you to think back. This is a reflective piece. So this week we're going to be practically looking at the, um, the um, students we interact, the way we grow up, how somebody told us probably about a math exam that you took. And if you were so smart, even someone telling you, see, I am not. You're so smart. You did it. That is detrimental because someone who is smart, in order to keep their smart status, end up cha cha uh, receiving, requesting less challenging problems. Uh oh. Sorry, Moza. It could be because um, internet connection here might be going back and forth. Hold on. This is all the way. Can you hear me now? 
I turn it all the way up. There's another voice in the background and it's louder than your voice. Oh, okay. All right. I think. So this is, okay. I am in, uh, okay. I'm in a quiet room considerably. So let me just go all the way to the corner. And then instead of turning on the, okay. Instead of putting my earphones, how about now? Can you hear me? This is much better for me, yes. Okay, so I turn. Moza, Moza, is this working for you? Yeah, this looks good. How about Moza? If it is good like this. She wrote, yeah, yes, she wrote yes on the chat. Yes, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for testing because this is also recording, so we better have a good uh, recording session. Um, and one of the things that I also want you to think why some students are lazy. I found in my anecdotal evidence the students become lazy because they have a hole, let's say, in mathematics concepts because math builds on the previous concept. So they, they're having trouble in the previous concept. How are they going to move to the next concept? So they end up um, not being able to do their homework. And they look at the homework. They, it's so confusing. They can't understand. So they immediately um, fall back into the next strategy to survive because they don't want to look stupid. But it is okay to, to call yourself lazy. So I want you to um, discuss this um, idea about do you want to be stupid versus lazy? So that's one of the, um, uh, I think, uh, teaching strategy to find out when the students are not completing their tasks, especially in mathematics. It could be because they had the prior knowledge missing and they're struggling to keep up with their uh, current assignments. And there is no one to ask. That's why I like Khan Academy. I hope you guys had a chance to get um, at your accounts in Khan Academy. Um, Khan Academy is um, <clears throat> um, a resource that uh, is very, very popular, especially among um, homeschooling uh, areas. So I want you to get an account and I wanna show you how my son is doing on Khan Academy. Now his school is using a whole different um, system. Oh, as a parent, you can actually create as, um, one for your own child and um, use this one as a learning opportunity at home as well. So this is um, my son's um, uh, Khan Academy account. He uses under my name. I don't know why it's not moving, okay. So it gives you badges. So you're not racing with your friends. So it's okay to be, how can I say, it's okay to uh, fail a test because once you fail, you will have a chance to go back and redo it. Um, so it's not like a classroom situation. This is called mastery learning. So you mastery, master a topic, then you can move on to the next topic. And you are not, um, in this case, you are not racing with your um, peers. So my son actually, uh, go ahead and finish seventh grade. So he's currently in seventh grade, but he finished seventh grade uh, last um, uh, uh, summer. Uh, he'd have this 100% uh, completion. So it's very interesting how you can, um, uh, this is of course based on the American um, system, but if they put a new test that um, you can also take. There are places you can practice. And this is amazing uh, way to, um, to go back and relearn things or stagger upon the other things you currently um, learn. So this is one of my um, favorite um, tools as a mother, as an uh, educator. And three years ago, when I taught STEM, I asked my students um, to um, go here and get a badge. So for instance, if you go and get a badge, I'm gonna to try to see my profile. Um, you can in fact get um, earth badge, sun badge and, and so on. And 
my, when my son got these badges, can you see them right under here? He has 170 badges altogether. Uh, but as you can see, he has 62 meteoroid, um, 50 moon, six earth, nine sun, and um, no black hole, but 42 challenge patches. So why this is important here? Because if you guys happen to get um, a sun badge, I'll give you five extra points in the semester. Because getting a sun badge takes a long, long, long time. So I said this to, to my students and the complaint from the students was, it's an extra point activity, by the way, and I, I welcome you to challenge yourself as well with five extra points if you need it. Um, but the students were so uh, um, annoyed in different ways. They complained and they said, because of you, we're now uh, addicted to Khan Academy. So they were 12 o'clock still uh, answering and trying to get a badge. So it was even tested on my students. Um, uh, and these are not master students. These are the undergraduates um, who were um, trying to get their teaching certificate in New Jersey. And they had a chance to um, uh, uh, learn some badges and, um, and so on. So mastery learning is extremely um, built upon uh, knowledge, prior knowledge that you have, and then you can keep practicing, and then you can move on to the next level. So you don't feel lazy. You don't feel stupid. You just feel empowered to learn more because you uh, mastered the skill before and you're not competing with um, your classmates who may be learning the math concept faster than you are. Any questions, please feel free to um, unmute yourself or uh, type it on the Zoom chat, please. Because the dialogue that we're going to do this um, this week is what is growth mindset and what is it that uh, we can do to grow the mindset of our students? Because if a student comes to your classroom and the only thing they say to you, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not good in math, then there is no way you can teach anymore because the student closed his or her channels to learn. So I'm hoping our job is to open those channels, expand those channels, so they'll have a chance to learn for themselves. And providing tools like Khan Academy, hopefully give them another alternative way to catch up on their um, uh, concepts and understanding. All right, I wanted to also um, share with you, I don't know if you got an invitation from Google Classroom, I hope you did. I created and I put a code number here to join. Um, I, I am trying to move everything on this website 